everyone, I'm Morgan. Thank you for coming in today. I am part of the Learning Genie Education Partnership team. I'm also a former preschool teacher here in uh, California. I'm so excited for you all to be here as well as our lovely panelists from all over the country. Uh, this has definitely been an interesting year to say the least, but as Lala was saying, we are all very resilient and I'm definitely excited for next year. I'm going to briefly go over uh, Learning Genie's all-in-one tool and go through our new updates for our in-kind module. So if you are currently a Learning Genie user and you're using in-kind, this will be definitely exciting for you. I was showing Becky some of our updates coming up and she was getting very excited about that. So how is Learning Genie supporting early learning under COVID? We are an all-in-one tool for families and educators to partner together about children's learning. Uh, you can schedule and facilitate virtual classroom events, share digital learning resources with families in real time. You can also communicate with families freely without language barriers and share activities and your lesson plans with families. We, uh, you can also track at home learning with our data dashboards on each of our modules. So there are four components to Learning Genie. We have a, our portfolio and assessment module, um, typically for DRDP uh, assessments. So this tool enables easy organization of notes and collaboration between staff to produce quality observations. We have our family engagement tool that enables two-way communication between teachers and parents with over 100 different languages for parents to have their parent app translated into, which eliminates language barriers between families and staff. Staff can also share educational videos, video books, and create virtual events and activities to share with families through our family engagement tool. Uh, our digital health card and attendance module uh, this is used for data-driven decision-making to create and provide timely health tracking during this pandemic. Our contactless attendance feature can be used additionally with this, our daily health card tool and can be used for tracking on-site and hybrid learning. So if you have distance learning families, you can track their learning as well. Our in-kind tracking, which I'll go over in a little bit more detail in the next few slides, this is also known as that non-federal match for Head Start agencies and schools. It's a paperless collection of in-kind that reduces potential errors and encourages more in-kind submissions. So all of our Learning Genie modules come with a data dashboard. You'll see here it's flipping through. So Learning Genie's dashboard provides a data-driven methodology to guide agencies for continuous quality improvement. So moving on to our in-kind module. So staff assign, act. so how it works, our tool is staff assign activities from Learning Genie. So they can send activities to families, certain activities they need to complete. Um, so such as like language and literacy activities or anything families need to complete. Teachers can attach photos, examples of activities they need to submit and give an array of different activities to complete in a description. This is one way some schools are utilizing our tool. And families can easily contribute in-kind from home. So this is what our in-kind parent app looks like. So it's made easy and fle uh, flexible for families. So after staff assign in-kind activities for families to do, parents or now volunteers can submit in-kind and they can submit different activities, customized activities and admin and teachers can can review it. In-kind can be translated in up to 100 different languages, so it really takes away that language barrier between families and staff. So a new update we're going to have coming uh, in the next year, uh, for the new year, uh, will be um, say parents cannot submit from their app any volunteer, such as you know, grandparents, staff, and other community service providers can submit in-kind from our new Learning Genie web portal that will be coming out soon. Uh, so families and um, different volunteers can come and submit different uh, in-kind and sign after, as well as attach a certain value amount for that activity.
You can also download, in, download in-kind reports that have for each child or each classroom for specific months or for the year. You'll be able to get these PDFs and see the total time of activities that families have submitted, as well as the values will be calculated automatically, as well as the entries. And a new update will be, um, it will separate individual families, the total of in-kind they're submitting. So it won't be just a group, you know, it won't be a total for both family members together. It will be an individual total for both mom and dad and so forth. And those signatures will be attached and they are currently attached right now. So you'll, you can always have those signatures, um, but that is just a new update. It will calculate those total time and dollar amounts individually for families. Uh, with Learning Genie, you can uh, upload your own customized templates and uh, you can upload different templates. So if you have different um, volunteer activities or if you have different at home activities for different age groups, like your toddler age group, preschool age group, um, you can now set different values uh, amounts for each activity. So you can incorporate your policy council meeting um, values. If those are higher, you can set a different value for that. Uh, activity. So this is great for presenters if they're coming in, um, like firefighters coming in to do a presentation, or they can uh, contribute in kind as well now. So I want to go over this. There is a common misconception between uh, Learning Genie and other data management systems. So such as, you know, Child Plus and uh, other systems, a lot of people have been comparing us to Child Plus. So I wanted to uh, sh sh show a visual on how we are actually different from Child Plus and they work, you know, they can, they correspond with one another. So Learning Genie automatically files each in-kind transaction in different digital folders. So Learning Genie has all the reports and everything you need. Um, you collect the activity activities from volunteers and families. And then your data management system is that filing cabinet that you put those files into. So for example, on how to enter into Child Plus or COPA or My Head Start, you would, um, Learning Genie has all your monthly statistics on all the activities and the amounts as well as the signatures. So you would just put in the description field on your data management system. Um, refer to Learning Genie files because all the original signatures and details are automatically saved in Learning Genie. So that is the end of my presentation. Now you can look forward to our YouTube channels. We're going to be having uh, on YouTube, it's Learning Genie. You'll be able to see videos on how to do this. And if you want to get started, you can uh, uh, contact us and we can show your agency a demo for this as well. Okay, I'm gonna pass it over to Jerry. Thank you so much, everyone. Well, Jerry is transitioning. I just want to add, uh, uh, I forgot to announce. Um, so uh, this webinar is recorded and uh, we will be sending out the recording of the, this webinar together with the slides to you uh, on your registered email within 48 to 72 hours. And you will also receive a certificate within 48 to 72 hours. Thank you. Thanks, Lala, and thanks, Morgan. Um, so now I have the honor of um, introducing our panelists who have been so kind to help me put this together. They are teachers and administrators who are experiencing a lot of the things that a lot of you in the audience are um, with trying to engage families from afar. So collecting in-kind has been no easy feat during this time. So I'm excited to have them share what's been working for them or maybe what's not been working and, and, and hopefully create um, kind of like a nice list of things that you can all try as well. Um, so if you do have any questions for our panelists while we're having this discussion, please feel free to put them into the Q&A on your um, Zoom bar down there. I, I, um, I know that's not a feature that's always there, but the Q&A is where Lala and Morgan will be answering a lot of your questions during, and then we'll get to the rest of them at the end of our panel. Um, and of course, just a reminder that these are experiences um, that our panelists have seen at their agencies. Um, you could be going through something very different, but just remember to be very positive and kind um, if you are putting any comments or questions into our chat. 
So let's finally hear from our panelists. Uh, so I'm gonna actually let them introduce themselves. And so if all of you could kind of give a brief overview of um, your role, your agency, uh, where you guys are at with the opening of your schools um, and we'll start there. So Becky, you wanna kick us off here? Hello everyone, I'm Becky from Kneecap Incorporated. Um, we're in Kansas, Northeast Kansas, and I'm the home visitation coordinator. So currently we have nine counties we serve. Um, all of those nine counties, we are under mask mandates, but we do have kiddos in classrooms. So we are seeing kiddos come to school. Our home visitors are virtual with some outdoor visits here and there. And we're trying to get creative with how they can do some knock and drop activities and things like that. So we're picking up on the home visiting end as well to engage families. Amazing, thanks Becky. Uh, and then Allie who also works with Becky, go ahead. Hi, I'm Allie. Um, I work with Becky. Um, I actually am an assistant teacher. Um, we do have children that are here at the center. I think we've actually been quarantined and closed more than we've been in the classroom lately, but <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> Thanks. And then Evelyn, if you want to wrap us up on the introductions. Yes, uh, my name is Evelyn and I work with the Head Start Child Family Development Program. Our grant office is out of Hastings, Nebraska. We serve several counties, uh, Head Start and Early Head Start. We are currently doing in-person and some distance learning um, due to some restrictions right now. Of course, yeah, I think that's kind of across the board. Everyone has like kind of this different way that they're operating right now. Um, so yeah, so let's kind of jump into the, the meat of this. Um, let's talk about a little bit of the challenges that you guys are facing when it comes to collecting in-kind. What is like your process right now? Are any of you um, already are still using a paper process because of COVID? Um, what is like the process you guys have? Um, Evelyn, since you were already talking, you wanna start with you? <laughs> sure. We, so we still use a little bit of paper. We, one of the biggest issues we've ran into is our parents who are unable to download the Learning Genie app and use it with the browser. They're not able to enter in kind. So those parents are the only ones at this point we're really taking paper in kind from. We've had a, for the majority, at least this the sites that I serve, we've had a pretty good transition into using Learning Genie for in-kind, just trying to work out how to find and how to collect as much as possible that maybe we're missing and able to work that out. Perfect. And Becky? Yeah, I would Good say job. that probably our, we're blended very, we are definitely more paperless than we are paper. Um, and we have found that those that don't know about paper know that this is the only way you do it. So this is what they do. So if we don't give them that option and because they're able to do it on their phones, unless they really get to complaining and really want that paper, then we give it to them. But um, it's definitely not something we offer up front. So that would be our challenge as well as those that aren't able to necessarily download it correctly on their devices or have the space for it. Mm -hmm. And Allie, did, did you wanna add anything as far as just pandemic challenges and, and working with your parents? Um, well, so I would say like here lately, we haven't gotten much um, in kind on the app just because we've kind of geared more towards ABC Mouse here lately. Um, so, it has been a little bit harder. So we have been doing more paper, but other than that, we kind of tell our parents, you know, we have the Learning Genie app, so we need to be using it. Right. So. So when you are kind of doing this mix, this is, I guess, for all of you, if you're doing this mix of Learning Genie and doing paper, how are you kind of facilitating this, like collecting all like the paperwork and then inputting it into your, um, into your like database of all this? We are very lucky that we have a one person that puts all the in-kind in. And so she collects it from all the staff. So she knows if there's paper out there she needs to get, or she goes into Learning Genie and runs those reports. 
And so she grabs the reports off Learning Genie and then the centers, um, our centers typically email her if they have some paper they need to turn in or when their in-kind's ready. Mm -hmm. So I think all of you kind of mentioned this. I know Evelyn, you had uh, like some colleagues who do home visits specifically um, and you, you do virtually. Um, based on your different relationships with your families, how are you able to, are you like changing your approach, I guess, in delivering all of the materials? One of the things we really noticed in the beginning that kind of helped increase our in-kind was parents, you know, going from an in-home visit, more interview style, to a virtual visit, and, and our home visit isn't there. We kind of lost some tracking of what, what the child is doing that can count. And so what we really noticed was once our home visitors, even on the virtual visits, are kind of reverting back to that interview style of, so what did you and Sally do this week? And kind of helping parents catch those items that they think don't really count. And once our home visitors like is able to identify those and say, you know, that sounds like that's part of our IDP goal. Mm -hmm. And then the parents are able to help identify that and, and start help make that transition of, you know, home visitor writing it down to mom or dad saying that's what matches with what we have in the app for, for in kind. Mm -hmm. for, for your teachers in particular, are, how many students are is each teacher working with at this point, just if you are doing kind of a more personalized approach? Oh, our classroom that is in the site that I'm at, we have 12 students. Currently. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ali, are you doing something different since you are doing mostly all remote? Um, what what have been, has been like the big change in your approach this year in, in delivering the lesson plans? Uh, well, I don't really have a say in it per se. Um, we do like the homework sheets and then we take them to the family's houses and we drop them off. Um, but other than that, I mean, I don't. Yeah. He does, they do make videos do. and get to uh, yes. post those through your yes. learning media. She's not giving herself enough credit here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're definitely going to dive way more into like the specific things that you guys are doing as far as activities and, and creating your lesson plans a little bit later in the conversation. So I'll, I'll come back to you, Ali, on that for sure. Um, so let's talk a little bit about communication. I know we already kind of touched on this a little bit, but um, all of you are using Learning Genie and you said that some parents have either fallen off or you've had to kind of use a combination of different methods to reach them. Um, let's start with how you're using Learning Genie specifically to kind of get communications out, whether they be activities, general announcements, anything like that. Um, well, our FDAs, they do like a check-in kind of each week just to let the parents know that, you know, we're thinking about their families and um, everything that, you know, we have going on or, you know, like family engagements that we have for the month. Um, and then us teachers, you know, if we have something that we would like to be known, then we put it out there for each child. Mm -hmm. um, and as administrative, like we're able to send out some of those, like why our agency is doing what they are doing around COVID practices to every student in our agency. So we use the communication that way. Um, we can attach some of the handouts from our state departments in activities so that parents can see that. Um, I know a lot of our staff have been creating events and trying to get parents involved that way. Um, they send the video books and of course the learning media. Yeah. Yeah, is that similar to you, Evelyn? Yeah, we use it for a wide variety. We use it all the way from our menus for our classroom to COVID-related information that are resources for our families to we, um, like currently we are delivering some food boxes. So probably about an hour before this meeting, you know, there's a message going out to our families saying our home visitors are going to be coming around. So we use it for a wide variety of information mm -hmm. for our families. Yeah, I, I think this like something that we've had in like our, our past webinars and just in my general conversations with other agencies as well is that you have to be so consistent, right? Just like follow up, follow up, follow up. Are you guys, because sometimes like if they're not on Learning Genie, as you guys said, um, is there other 
like multiple means of communication that you're trying to get as, as an email learning genie? Like, how are you guys kind of handling that? No, our staff, um, we, we try to really encourage learning genie as the first line, just because it's, it's, there's so many benefits to it and so many uses to it that you, we do use some, you know, we have some Some of the text options through chatbots to allow that documentation feature. Sorry, Evelyn, I think you might have cut out just a bit if you want to repeat that just one more time. Uh, we also use the um, text feature in Crofchild Plus for documentation purposes. There's, but there's also the, you know, email or Facebook Messenger video, kind of we, we use what we have to, but we try to really encourage Learning Genie being our first means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think like, we, like the teachers are always kind of like that main like contact for our, like the parents. Is there a particular between like Elvila and, and Ali, is there kind of a cadence or a schedule that you guys are following um, to kind of reach parents? I know like our parents are always like, if, if they're working, if they, they all, everyone has like a different schedule. So how are you kind of keeping up with following up and making sure that you are getting like your message to them? Ali, did you have anything else? Like, do you follow like a like a communication schedule, or have you done like surveys or anything like that to, to reach them? Um, no, not usually. Um, usually, just the, our SDAs, you know, usually get a hold of our families, or if we have to, we um, text or call our families if we need to get a hold of them if we can't get them through Learning Genie. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. Awesome. So going off of that, uh, this is something that Becky and I talked quite a bit about, and it, that's just the general parent buy-in of not only just using Learning Genie, but using any of the tools that you guys have um, set up uh, within your agency and just getting them kind of on board with like if it's Zoom or if it's just any type of communication with them, especially if they're, they're completely distance learning. Um, what, how are you kind of making this... Um, like an easy thing for them to attain. I, I, when we talked about, when I talked to Becky, it was like a lot of like the training guides. So what have you kind of set up on the back end to kind of streamline this before it even gets to like the teachers to communicate? Oh yeah, I think definitely when new staff come on, there's some training that happens and they're told about that and how Learning Genie works. And you have to get the buy-in from your staff. So we do a lot of Learning Genie training all the time. Um, and with all the updates, I try to send out as specific guidelines as I can. Um, I give them resources to access so that the staff are comfortable accessing the resources. And then on the back end of that, I've also developed parent resources so that the staff can then train the parents or mm -hmm. I can even train the parents. And we walk through. I know at the beginning of this year with one of my sites, we did a virtual, um, we did it through Teams. We did a virtual like family engagement and we did Learning Genie was our topic and it was setting it up and how do we do the in-kind and showing them all the features they can use within Learning Genie. So that was an important piece to get them to buy in and they've had some excellent um, response watching those families are getting on and really engaging with their videos that they're mm -hmm. posting as well. Yeah, that's great. So, I mean, Morgan mentioned, so Learning Genie on our end, we have a ton of training videos, right? Like we like to do, like use our general features and like they're very informative, but for each individual site, like things may be, might be a little different. You might be using it very specific. So what were like the, let's start with like the teacher, like the teacher training. What were some of the main points um, that you included on, on these resources that you gave to teachers? Um, first of all, it's that this is the main way that you're going to communicate with your parents. Um, and so this is how you onboard parents. Um, another big one that we do is, hey, go ahead and set up that child, that fake child in your classroom so that you can download the parent side of it and really see what that looks like. So when you're walking a parent through, a parent comes in with an issue, you can really see what that looks like. So we encourage them to use it and get familiar with it because once people get in and use it and see how easy it is to use, then it's like, oh, well, this is easy and I can access all my students at one time. Like it, it, it does seem fairly simple once they get in and do it. And then 
once they start getting some response back from parents, it's so much easier. And if staff are excited about it, parents will be excited about it. Right. So that's where the start is, is that we all have to be excited about it. Yes, that definitely. Just kind of, kind of keeping that positive attitude. I think that will like really help with parents. So then when you send out your resources to parents, is there anything different that um, you send out to them or is there um, kind of a, a way that you present like these training materials to them that is like a little bit more digestible? Um, I do a PowerPoint for parents that actually walks them through step by step so they can actually like during a family engagement, they can get on their phone and their phone is going to look like what they're seeing on the PowerPoint so they can actually enter in mm -hmm. information and see it step for step up step by step up on a screen through mm -hmm. the PowerPoint. Um, and that is very helpful because I think they also have to gain confidence to do that. And so in order to use the app and get comfortable with putting the in-kind in, I also suggest, hey, you're on your phone looking at Facebook. Instead of looking at Facebook for 10 minutes, go in and search for an activity that you want to do with your kiddo. And because really you can go into the in-kind portion and search ball and ball for all kinds of ages, whatever activity you have in there is going to come up and it's going to give them a description. So let us know if we're doing a study on balls, then type ball into the search engine and it's going to bring up your activities and you will have the activity description right there to do with your kids. Um, I have staff also use that to get them more into the app and sharing it with parents. I have them use that search engine to then develop like right now, instead of socializations, we're doing knock and drops. Mm -hmm. So for the knock and drop theme, if they want to do something around fish, they type in fish and all the activities that are age appropriate for fish come up. So they are able to develop knock and drop activities around that. So really it's getting them in there and getting them doing it and giving them the confidence. And then they will come to you and say, I can't get it to do this. Well, at least we know they're using it because then we know, and they give us great suggestions that I have shared with you guys that have right. improved the app as well. Yeah, definitely. In this kind of like this process kind of going off with like the suggestions that they give, is there anything specific that like the parents from your community have like that have been really helpful and just um, like the deployment of all these activities? Is there anything that you would say is like pretty notable about just timing, um, of like how you present this to them. I know something that had come up and in, in someone from the, the audience had mentioned that getting a lot of these activities out as early as possible um, and then actually doing the activities maybe even two weeks later is like how it has to be. Like you just have to like kind of drip the information pretty early on so that they're ready by the time you wanna do that activity next Friday. Um, is there anything that they, they've mentioned to you? That. Um, I don't know specifically, I think they just recently, like they like the option that they can add in several activities at one time. Mm -hmm. So then like, um, and which was a suggestion that came from parents and we've been able to change. So like, maybe they don't have time every day, but they have time at the end of the week or mm -hmm. on the week. And so then they're able to put all their activities in at once right. and that's been helpful for them. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I think came from our parents um, up the line here. Yeah. Amazing. Um, let's move into, cause I know this is going to be a big one and there's going to be a lot of um, questions from the chat based on just general activities that you guys are doing. So this is probably more on the teacher side, um, but let's start with just how you are making like your activity is really clear and kind of going off of, you know, like if it, you have to start the activity and letting them know two weeks earlier, like what have you guys been doing to make that easy to do for parents and families at home? Evelyn, do you want to start? We, so our, what we, what our teachers do is they take curriculum material and share it directly on um, with, some descriptions of exactly what's needed um, for the child to do. Um, sometimes with pictures like the example that you had in the beginning. We also, we are doing our socializations virtually. 
and we do use the event creator for that. Uh, we have currently just started doing it agency-wide, so our parents are able to see parents from other counties and engage with them. So that's been really beneficial and good for them. Mm -hmm. Are you able, you, you said you guys use like the events pretty well yes. and like just general socialization. Are you able to kind of translate um, those things into in-kind for them? If it, if it is like an activity that, it, what, what exactly are you doing there? Um, I'm sorry, what do you mean? Um, so you, you said you do like socializations. Is it, Correct. An, is it like an activity that you guys are sending out and then you, you meet all on Zoom and you're able to translate that activity into? So what they typically do ahead of time is they send out, we have, we send out the flyers, we send out leaks. Depending on the activity, sometimes there's a little example video that they send a link to through the engagement piece and then they just do the activity at the same time over like a Zoom link or whatever. And we do post, we are able to post that in the uh, event link as well. Okay. And then are you having them then like take the photo or are you recording it on your end to actually make that a submission? Yes, we're recording on I our see. end typically because you can, they either use the sign in or we've used the new feature of where the staff can sign in the parent afterwards. Mm -hmm. And then Allie, was there anything specific you were you were doing just to kind of get, um, like make sure that these activities were easy to do? Um, well, we actually, so I have actually recorded one of our teachers um, throughout the last few months that we've been in school, um, just, you know, doing what she had done in class um, with the children. And then I would upload it to YouTube and then then upload it to the learning media on learning genie okay so is it like a just like what like a full like lesson that you just kind of drop in there and then you send it out to parents um well sometimes it would just be a book um or sometimes it would be just a small little lesson like something to do with math or science that she had done for the day mm -hmm. and then how are you making sure that parents are then able to make this into like an actual in-kind submission. Um, are, are, like, are you in your message saying like, like these are like, take, like take a photo of, of your child doing this? Like, how are you making sure that the, it'll come back as an in-kind submission? Uh, we do actually ask that they send a picture of them or, you know, their child doing the activity. Mm -hmm. Okay. We get the feedback, but we try. Yeah. <laughs> um, are there, and so one of the things that I, I've like heard from like a lot of our other um, agencies is that they've been doing um, kind of like if they send out an activity, they'll actually match the activity for the parents, like very specifically, like this is the number um, that, that matches that activity. Is that, has that been helpful for you guys as well? A little bit. Yeah. Where are you guys finding your, um, like, are, are you guys, like, everyone has had to get so creative in making these, like, different types of activities, like, since you're not in the classroom, it's not so interactive, or, like, maybe, like, some kids, like, are not as, like, engaged as they used to be, like, where are you finding, like, your resources, if, as there are, like, other, like, sites or other, like, um, places that you're finding some of the stuff to send out to your kids? Um, typically just YouTube. <laughs> yeah. We just take, we just upload videos off of YouTube. Yeah. Our kids really seem to like some of the videos that we have posted just because they're more interactive. Yeah. Can you give us an example of, of one that you thought was just like really helpful mm -hmm. uh, or like one that like, a, like the kids like really enjoyed that you actually did get a lot of engagement from? And this is for you as well, Evelyn. We had a time where different staff from our program were reading books and then sharing those on YouTube and then also sharing those onto Learning Me onto Learning Genie. And the kids really enjoyed being able to see their teachers. Oh, so it's really nice. like your actual staff like sitting and, and reading the Yep, yep. Different staff, different administration. Mm -hmm. And then what follow-up do you send like with this just to kind of like to prompt them to to be able to put it in as in kind? If they, like, if they so watch. what we do is we share that in, in, in the learning media section 
And so with the new changes coming up with that, to be able to count that for in kind, that will be good. Yeah. Becky, you shared a couple um, little like activities that you've sent. Um, let me just- Yeah, get... those are just from our curriculum. So we use Mighty Minutes and we use Frog Street. So what, yep, there's the Mighty Minute. So we can attach that and send that to parents. And then that exact, I have put all of that into the Learning Genie in kind. And so they have this description on their app as well. Um, and then with Frog Street, they send out a um, family connections newsletter and we've uploaded those activities to be on the in-kind side of Learning Genie so they can submit those as well. So we do that. We have um, different ASQ and ASQSE activities we've uploaded for parents. Um, our home visitors use Growing Great Kids. So we have those resources in the in-kind portion. Um, we do have a specific reading portion. So any book they read, they can put in. We also have um, what we call extended learning activity. So if they have done something um, related to what we have assigned. Um, so if we've ex assigned them a specific activity to just motivate running, but they have, they've played tag, they can put that in the extended learning activity as tag, and then we can count that as well. Okay. And then now also like our, a lot of our classrooms are uploading their videos for the students that are virtual and we have blended classrooms as well where some are virtual and some are not. And so now that the learning media is connecting, we can count those videos as well. Nice, okay, that, that's good to know, yeah. Uh, and again, for everyone in the audience, we'll be sending out all these slides and the video. So you'll have, um, like, you can take a better look at this if you can't see the, the details on any of this. Um, we'll be sending that out. Um, I, I want to give a little bit of time for the Q&A. Um, so Morgan and Lala have been looking at that. If you want to come back and... <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we did have some questions um, for today. So there were some questions regarding um, that I'll answer really quickly. And then there were some for Becky as well as everyone. So there were some questions on um, for the parent side, how do they, how do you have parent like uh, give parents videos uh, for in kind? So on Learning Genie's YouTube channel, if you search in kind, we do have a parent video that you, we recommend you share that at your parent meeting. If you're having a virtual Zoom conference, share that, uh, that uh, in kind parent video and it shows an overview on in kind and we do have in kind webinar video on that as well. So it's on our Learning Genie YouTube channel. So that answers that question. And we also have a question for um, Becky. Uh, what is a knock and drop activity and what is Mighty Minutes? Okay, knock and drops are our version of socialization. So our home visitors say they, a lot of them are doing snow um, for December. So they've taken out the materials needed to do activities related around snow. So whether it be making a snowflake, like cutting them out or um, painting, um, like a lot of them paint the white on a black paper. So they may take black construction paper and white crayons. Um, some of them are making snow. So they have all these different activities. And so, and so since we can't get together and do a socialization, we take those same activities to every family and then provide them with the guidance of how to do those activities and then ask them um, in response back well, how did that activity go? What did your child like most about it? What do you think you could do differently? What do you think they would enjoy doing? But truly, we're just knocking on their door and dropping off the supplies they need to complete activities. So that's kind of how we're doing our socializations. We do have some staff that are starting to do Facebook Live, but that can get tricky because of the times parents are home and working and all of that to meet all the needs. So this was our best way to meet all of the family's needs was do the knock and drops. Um, and the Mighty Minutes is actually from the creative curriculum. They're just little cards. 
that there are activities that you pull and it'll tell you what age and what activities are on them. And it truly is just takes you a couple minutes to do those activities, which is why they call them mighty minutes. And they have them for birth to three and also um, threes and fours. Great, thank you. Thank you for that. Very informative. That's awesome. And um, also uh, for Becky, do you, this is from Andrea S. Do you enter off the class's monthly report or each individual child's report? We actually run off each individual child's report. Um, we have to have those signatures for the in-kind from each family. So we run off each individual child report. Um, for my board and policy council, I just give them a copy of our family engagement dashboard. So I set the parameters to be for like November 1st to November 30th. And then I send that report out to them so they can see what we're doing as an agency. Um, so those are the reports we run most often. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, I was looking at more questions. Lala, did you have any other questions to add in? Or yeah, actually, um, uh, more of um, uh, from audience, more of the implementation. They all want to get some tips. I think uh, one of the, uh, the question is, um, we have many parents that just um, understanding the importance of submitting in kind as an element of our program. How do you communicate the necessity to parents? With our program during our orientation process, we actually have a paper that kind of spells out why we need it and it's so important. And then it's constantly like during our parent meetings, during parent teacher conferences, during socializations. And we do some prize earnings for like parents who maybe have generated the most in kind. enjoy being able to see on the parent app how much they generated during the time during certain time frames wonderful wonderful um becky and ali do you have anything to add on how do you motivate parents <laughs> well i think the first trick um and i always come back to this is that staff have to understand what in kind is and the importance of it so in kind can be really hard to wrap your head around. So we try to train our staff the best we can so that then they can get our parents motivated. And I am in definite agreement with Evelyn. When the parents see those little dollar signs going up, they get so excited. And we've actually had some sites that have got a little, they've set some goals. Like, so they'll tell their families, my caseload has this much in kind last month. So let's see if we can get this much more this month. And that has really motivated parents to get in there and do what they need to do. Wow, wonderful, wonderful. That's really cool. Uh, the other, que another question is, um, how do you um, encourage um, your parents to put their time in consistency? And also, you know, the accuracy, maybe you can talk about your approval process and your workflow that way. Either one of you want to talk about it? How our program works is best practice for us at the moment is the, the individual who works primarily with the child is the one who approves. So we have home visitors that visit the home they will approve the in-kind because they know typically what parents are doing and how much they're doing. And same with our classroom staff is typically the teachers that approve. Sometimes the administration does depending just on, but typically it's our people who have firsthand interaction with the family. Thank you for the tip. Becky and Ali, do you have anything to add on to that part? Um, I. Basically what Evelyn said, um, our staff, um, normally our teachers will um, approve the in-kind because they know, you know, each teacher knows their child best. 
And I think, I just want to add, I think with consistency, I know with home visiting, it's a little different because you see the parents more often, but our home visitors are able to walk the parents through that on a visit. Like if they haven't entered for a week, like, okay, hey, how come you haven't put anything in there? And so they're walking them through that. And so eventually parents are just like, I don't want to spend my home visit entering in kind. So I'm going to do it through the week. <laughs> And that's kind of what we've found, too, is that sometimes it does take our home visitor to say during the home visit, OK, I noticed there's no in kind for this week. Let's go ahead and talk about what you've done and cover that with the parent and just get it done during the home visit time. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. And the last question I saw, actually, uh, there are more questions coming in. And uh, uh, I'm trying to, uh, Becky, um, you actually mentioned about the, the great resources you have and uh, actually uh, the audience are asking, Becky, would you like to share some of your resources, uh, the, the, the wonderful things you created? I can share. I can't promise that they're completely up to date, but I can share them, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we can coordinate with Becky and uh, when that's available, we will share with the members and thank you, really appreciate that. Yep, not a problem. I'm excited about these new updates coming too. Nice. Are there any other questions, Lala, that you wanted to bring? Um, we actually uh, have some members that actually raised their hand. I, I assume they want to ask questions in live. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if we could, we have enough time. Maybe we can do a couple questions. Let's see. Um, their hands for a long time. <laughs> all right, I will. Okay, so I'm going to go to Carrie if you want to ask question. And, um, you're able to unmute yourself if you... Nope, maybe not. <laughs> uh, all right, maybe Martha, did you have a question that you wanted to ask? Nope. Okay, maybe not. Maybe they, they maybe they accidentally hit the the uh, <laughs> that feature, which is okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but I do have I do have a bunch of tips um, that I had collected from our audience beforehand that I thought were actually really great. Um, so let me just go into those really quickly before we end our time here. Um, so our audience actually submitted a lot of these. Um, so some of them we talked about already with our panelists. Um, some of them um, maybe we didn't, but um, sending materials home if you have the ability to do so or making sure that the materials are available around the house. So I know um, a lot of people do like recycling activities or, or things that you could kind of find around any um, like just like common objects, uh, they're, they're using those and incorporating it to their activities. So I thought that was a great one. Um, this agency made like a, a classroom email. So they send all of their like pictures and all the things there. Um, and that, that has been helpful for them if they're not using Learning Genie. Um, like this one is really easy, just keeping it simple and practical, like just doing the same book and reassigning it just so it's a very nice routine. Uh, I accidentally went through, through too fast there. Um, yeah, so having, let's see. Yeah, creating a guide uh, that's changed each week. And so just making sure that guide like has like very specific activities for a week. I know a lot of people are doing like a, like a monthly activity board that they're sending out. Um, let's see, a resource fair. So that's like something that some agencies are able to do. If you're able to do like, um, Becky, you mentioned that you will send out um, like the actual like materials for things. And so if it was like white crayons, like you'll have like a fair where families can come pick up things like that, um, asking them to send in photos. So all of these slides will be sent out to um, our audience. Uh, I know I kind of skipped through here on accident, but oh, this one is a good one. Uh, giving a prize for the most in-kind collected for the month. Uh, just doing something that incentivizes uh, like all your families to kind of make, like gamify it a little bit and making it exciting and, and recognizing them at the end. I think that's something that a lot of our users had said is just giving really good feedback and recognition for doing it and just kind of reinforcing that 
you know, it's helpful for, the, for everybody, right? Like the, the students are benefiting because it's an activity, the school benefits uh, on, on the other side. So I'm just making sure that you're continuing to reinforce that. Um, but yeah, so those were, um, again, tips from our audience that you'll get in the slide deck and in the video as well. Uh, well. How I wanted to go ahead and end our discussion is just, you know, one last tip for uh, our audience from each of our panelists about, you know, like what will you take from this year and bring through the rest of this pandemic, past the pandemic, something that's going to be really helpful um, in like just your general communication with parents or if it's something operational that you, you found that was different from this year. Um, yeah, let's, let's start with Evelyn. I think probably the resiliency of our families and the ability to work with change. Oh, Evelyn, I, I think your your um, sound is is cutting out a little bit. We're not able to hear you. I'm going to um, move to Ali really quick, but yeah, I'll, I'll come back to you though. Can you ask that again? Yeah, so just a, just one big learning from the year that you'll you'll take with you as, as when you communicate with parents um, and, and trying to collect in kind. Just to tell them, you know, the importance of what we do every day. And, you know, it really, the children really benefit from what the parents do with their children on a daily basis. Perfect. Becky, did you want to add? Um, I think the big learning we had is that even no matter what comes along, we are willing to be innovative and work together and think outside of the circle and keep putting one foot in front of the other and making children, making it easy for children to learn and doing our best to help families. And Evelyn, hopefully we get your sound on, on this one. <laughs> can you hear me now? It's very soft, but yeah, if you could speak up, but yeah, I can hear you. Um, just probably the resilient partnership between the families and our staff. The, you know, it's been difficult for everybody and the compassion and empathy that they've shown on both sides and everybody's learning to adjust has been pretty fantastic. And just keeping in mind that everybody's trying to do the best they can and serve our children and the parents are trying to do the best they can for their children. Yeah, definitely. Thanks everyone. Um, yeah, I so appreciate all of you coming together um, and everyone in the audience as well for contributing all your tips and best practices um, throughout this year and collecting in kind. I know it's been very crazy, but I think all this creativity is honestly for something. I, I think it's going to get that much easier when you when we come out of this. And so um, all of this is just so, so helpful. Uh, so if you want to see more of, on the activity side, we do have one more webinar um, that's happening tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we have a lot of teachers from uh, a, a bunch of different programs that are sharing some of their um, activities that they send out um, based on how they connect that to their observations that they'll collect for DRDP or other rating assessments. Um, so please um, feel free to register for that as well. Um, if you have any questions or feedback for us, or if there's something that, a topic that you'd like covered in a future webinar, uh, please, please reach out to us. I, I have Morgan's email here. Um, but other than that, thank you so much for joining us to our panelists. Thank you for all of your insights to your program. Um, and we hope to see you guys again in another panel. Thank you, Jerry. It's been fun. <laughs>